In today's video, I'm going to be showing all of my aquariums and all the fish that I currently have. There's been so much changing for me over the last month or so down here in my basement as I continue to expand and phase two continues to grow for Cichlid Bros. I just wanted to share what I currently have, share some updates, and also look to the future and talk about some of those plans that are coming for the rest of the year. Really excited to walk through this one, so let's dive right in. If you're new to the channel, my name is Troy and I am one of three brothers that make up Cichlid Bros. My brothers Quinn and Alec have some very exciting updates to come very soon, but we're just going to focus on my basement aquariums today. And we're going to start with the big tanks and then make our way into the fish room and show everything that's happening today. So starting here with a 180 gallon aquarium, these are South American cichlids, and this is an acrylic tank that I set up about two and a half years ago. I also got a really cool upgraded Cichlid Bros logo up here above the 180. It was a Christmas gift from Quinn, and I think it really ties the room together. That rug really tied the room together, did it not? Most of the fish in here are a little over four years old now. I believe the Oscar is the youngest at about three years, but he is definitely the biggest in the tank now. And just starting with the Oscar here, this is my Tiger Oscar Nessie, who is definitely the boss of the tank, the biggest fish in here, and my most personable and probably my favorite cichlid that I currently own. I just love his personality, his coloration, his size. He is just an awesome fish and a pretty clear reason why Oscars are such a staple in the hobby today. I also have four Severums in here, starting with my two red spot gold Severums. I have big red here is probably four and a half years old. And then I have a slightly younger red spot gold Severum and they have paired up and they have bred a few times in the back right corner of this tank. I haven't seen those eggs hatch, but I'm always keeping an eye out for it, but they are always swimming together they're definitely a pair. And then I have my big turquoise severum, and this guy is huge for a severum. He's probably nearing 10 inches in length, and he's a very tall fish as well. He changes colors very often depending on his mood, but normally he's a pretty dark navy blue. And then my last severum is a red shoulder severum, and I'm a little disappointed in the coloration of this guy. I thought he would have a darker blue face and more of a pronounced red shoulder coloration, but he really hasn't gotten that yet, and it may just be this individual isn't gonna get that coloration. And then I have an electric blue Acara that's hiding somewhere in this tank, and then here is my black Acara, or Cyclosoma by Maculatum. And this guy has grown a lot. He's about six to maybe seven inches in length now, and he's got some girth and width to him as well. And then I have a group of Geophagus here. These are Geophagus topos, which has been recently changed to Geophagus pyrocephalus. And these guys are just incredible. I grew them up a little bit before I added them to the tank with an Oscar, which was smaller at the time. The Oscar quickly outgrew them, but because they had that head start, they've done really well as a tank mate for the Oscar. Sometimes these guys have amazing red head coloration and blue colors throughout their body. Usually that color is more pronounced when they're more in breeding mode, which I have seen a few times in this tank, and when they are in breeding mode, they are just so colorful and beautiful. But this is what they look like normally on a day-to-day -day basis, with a few of them having great color and a few of the females a little more dull. And then I have one Geophagus Steindagneri. This is a female. Normally the male Steindagneris get more of a pronounced red hump, but this female doesn't have that. It has more of that yellowish tan body with light red coloration on the forehead, but not that big hump that the males get. However, this female is probably the most aggressive cichlid in this tank. But because it's a 180 gallon aquarium, six foot long, there's plenty of space for the cichlids to get away from each other in established territories. So it hasn't been too bad, just a little bit of chasing here and there. And the last fish in this tank isn't a South American cichlid. It's actually my bala shark here named Bruce. Hello. This is a personal favorite fish that I wanted to keep and the 180 is a perfect size for it. Although they aren't from South America, they do tend to make great tank mates for cichlids as long as you have plenty of space for them to swim around and grow into. Some people say a bala shark needs to be kept in groups, and I do think they do well in groups, but this one solo bala shark has been great on its own. He's one of the group of the cichlids and swims around the tank. His behavior is very normal and he seems to really love life, and it's one of my favorite fish in the hobby. I'm really glad I got him with some of these cichlids all that time ago. He's probably nearing about five years in age now, so he's getting up there in age and in size. He's probably nearing 11 to 12 inches in length. But with all that being said, there is one cichlid missing, and let's talk about that now. So I did want to share a quick update, some unfortunate news about my chocolate cichlid. It was one of my favorite fish that I've ever kept. He was the second biggest in this 180 gallon aquarium. He was very personable and he was a big fish too. He's about 10 and a half inches, which I had for probably about three years now. And one morning I came down here and I noticed he was nowhere to be found 
and I discovered that he had jumped out of the tank. He somehow squeezed through a very tight slot by the canister filter that I thought I had secured really well, but apparently that was my mistake and somehow he got out. I was pretty devastated when this happened. It was about six weeks ago and I just didn't feel right talking about it yet. I wasn't in the right state of mind, especially as so many exciting things were happening down here in the basement. But I also had this weighing on me and I knew I wanted to share the update just so you could learn from my mistake, but it was also just something I wasn't ready to talk about at that time. But you live and you learn and I did secure that area at the back of the lid much better so that none of the other fish can get out in any way possible. Again, super bummed about it, but I'll definitely keep another chocolate liquid in the future. And with that unfortunate update, let's move to something that's more positive and that would be the 150 gallon aquarium. So moving on to the 150 gallon aquarium, this is my custom aquarium, and I can say this has never looked better. The tank seems so balanced, the South American cichlids in here are growing, they're happy and healthy. In this tank I do have live plants, so a lot of Anubias and Java fern, some driftwood, sand and rocks, and this is just one of my favorite all-time aquariums that I've set up. One of the main reasons for that is the growth and evolution of my Geophagus spinai. I have five of them in this aquarium and they have grown slowly but steadily and they are just complete showstoppers right now and they still have some room to grow. They'll probably all grow another inch or two in length and continue to get that great coloration throughout their body and in their fins. This is truly a show-stopping fish and quickly becoming one of my favorites in the hobby. I also have an albino hecali and a satanoperica juripari which are both earth eaters as well, so they keep the sand nice and clean. I never have to gravel vac. Nothing ever really settles on the sand. It's always looking pristine. And I have four electric blue acaras in here. They are doing great. I've even had electric blue acara breeding in this tank, and I've pulled out a lot of those fry over the months, and I'll show that in a tank later on in the video. I also have two zebra lace angelfish, and I really like them. They're kind of hard to see on camera at times because I have a black background and they are black, but they do really well in this tank and all these cichlids do pretty well with the plants in here, except for the jungle vow in the back, which kind of struggles to hang on because they're always trying to uproot it and I have to try and constantly weigh it back down. I have a school of seven denizen barbs in here and although they aren't South American cichlids or from South America, they do really well as a tank mate. They provide a ton of activity, some really great color with that red, black, yellow, and silver coloration. And then lastly in here, I have three plecos. One is an exotic leopard frog pleco, which I never see. And then I see my two bristlenose plecos a little bit more. Here's my super red bristlenose pleco who's doing great. They really keep the algae down and the plants themselves are just thriving. You can see some new growth coming in with some new leaves on some of the Anubias lately. It's just a great tank and has also never been this clear. I recently added some more Kimmy Pure Green to this tank and the ultra clear glass from Custom Aquariums just makes this look crystal clear and one of my favorite tanks I've ever had. So if you'd seen this aquarium in the past, you may be wondering where the Epistogram of Magmasteri is and unfortunately he passed away about a month ago. I guess when it rains it pours, but for this is a little bit of a different circumstance. It was a pretty old fish, especially for a dwarf cichlid. I had had the epistogramma for about two and a half years, but I had gotten it when it was already an adult. So in total, that episto had a really long life. It didn't have any external or internal issues that I saw. I think it really just passed away from old age. And even though it's an awesome fish for me for a long time and had some great color, it was definitely living a really good life for a long time. I wasn't quite as bummed out here because I do think I had a long and healthy life and it died of natural causes, whereas the chocolate cichlid was more of my error. So I didn't feel quite as bad, but it's always difficult losing a fish, especially when you lose a couple in back-to-back -back months. And when you are keeping so many tanks and so many fish like I am and they're starting to get up there in age, there are gonna be things like this happening you just try to limit your own errors and try to provide the best life possible for them and just hope that you can avoid these things as long as possible. It is difficult having a YouTube channel at times and having to share this news, but we also are transparent and want you to learn from any of our mistakes or any of our own experiences so you don't make the same or that we learn and grow together because that's really what it's all about. So that's the 180 and the 150. Now let's move over to the brand new discus tank, which is a 90 gallon aquarium that I just picked up two weeks ago. I set it up, I got it cycled, and I got the discus just a couple days ago, and they had just started to settle into this tank really nicely. I have six total discus in here. Three are red melon discus, and three are tiger turquoise. They've all started to eat pretty well and are starting to get some color. I cannot wait to show their evolution of their growth and their color patterns just really starting to come in 
and I'm also going to be adding tank mates to this very soon. A lot of you gave some great suggestions on tank mates for these guys and I'm going to be taking some of those suggestions and you'll be seeing that in a video very soon so make sure you keep an eye out for that and go check out that video from last week. But this is another tank with live plants. I have a lot of different java fern and anubias in here along with some spider wood and some rock and sand. And I'm actually kind of proud of this aquascape. I think it really came along nicely. So a lot more to come on this tank. I can't wait to show that. Make sure you subscribe down below so you don't miss it. And before we head into my fish room, which is just through that doorway, this is the space where the new big custom aquarium is coming. I've been hinting at that a lot. A lot of these different boxes are products and equipment that I already have ordered and unboxed on the channel which will all be going in that big new custom aquarium. And you're about to see some of the fish that might be going into that tank and that's in my fish room right now. So let's go check that out right through here. So here's my fish room, which has more project based aquariums with some quarantine tanks, grow out tanks and a few different setups that might be changing here pretty soon. Starting with the biggest tank in here, the 75 gallon, these are African cichlids. These are all male peacock cichlids and there is one hap. And I've really come to love this aquarium due to its activity and all that different colors that the peacock cichlids provide. Some of the notable peacocks in here, my favorite is the Nagara flame tail. I love the pattern on its tail. I love the lemon jake, that bright yellow and some of that blue color. The tank boss in here is definitely the red shoulder peacock, which is the biggest one in here right now. And then one of the fish that I unboxed only a couple months ago was the Madoka white lips which is actually a hap species because this peacock cichlid tank is actually going to grow into a peacock and hap mixed tank. I also have more fish coming for this tank and that unboxing likely will happen next week. I cannot wait. It's really going to be more of a holding tank as that custom aquarium is in the process of being built and once that does get here and set up all those peacocks and haps which are going to temporarily be in the 75 gallon will all move into that bigger upgraded aquarium. It's gonna be such a cool tank with some very unique features to it and I cannot wait to show what I have in store, some of the new fish coming and some of the new equipment as well. It's going to be awesome. And I love it when a plan comes together. And then over here on the right, this is a double rack. These are my two 20 gallon tanks, which are more grow out and quarantine tanks. As I mentioned before, in the 150 gallon tank, the electric blue cars have been breeding and when I was pulling out the fry, I put them in this tank and let them grow up. I've been slowly giving some of these away to my local fish stores, and as you can see, they've kind of overcrowded this tank, so I need to get more of these guys moved out to my local fish stores in the coming weeks. And if you're in the area, just keep an eye out for any of the main local fish stores. You'll likely be able to pick these up and buy them directly from the store. But these guys are just awesome. If you follow the channel for any length of time, you know the Electric Pulacara are one of my favorite fish to keep and I'll always have them in some of my tanks. And then above this is a 20 gallon grow out tank and quarantine tank. This has seven peacock and hap species. Three of them are blue dolphin cichlids, two of them are sulfur head peacocks, and then two of them are rostratum peacocks. Out of these fish, I was growing them out and hoping to get a male of each of the different species to eventually go with the bigger peacocks and haps into the big custom aquarium. I think I definitely have a male of the sulfur head, which already has some yellow coloration coming in. And then I think I have a male of the blue dolphin cichlid as well. I'm not sure about the Rostratum yet, but we will keep an eye out for that. I just can't wait for all these plans to come together and to finally show that on the channel. And then last but not least, I have a double rack on the left side of my fish room, and this is a 33 gallon Fluval Flex on the top and a 40 gallon breeder on the bottom. Me and my brothers built a stand for these two tanks and overall the aquariums are doing really well. Starting with the 33 gallon on top, this has African Shell Dwellers. These guys are very interesting to watch with very unique behaviors. It's definitely not the best looking aquarium that I have as Shell Dwellers are just constantly rearranging their tank moving shells around, burying some, but the cichlids themselves have thrived in here. They've continued to breed and establish that colony. I've given handfuls of these away and they've still continued to breed and repopulate each time. And last but not least, the 40 gallon breeder below it is a really cool tank because this is a cold water aquarium. And more so than any of my other setups, I would say this is almost like a biotope of the Uruguay and Paraguay region. It currently has seven Gymnogeophagus terra purpura, which are a related species to the Geophagus. However, they tolerate much colder temperatures because that's how their natural environment would be. And along with them, other fish from that region, I have the green fire tetras, a nice shoal in here, as well as a group of panda quarries, which are really fun to watch. 
The Gymnogeo Fagus Terra Purpura haven't really grown a ton, and they've been a bit of a disappointment because they've been so skittish in this tank. I really don't know why that is, it might just be the species itself. I've done a lot of different things to try and get them to come out, including the different tank mates I've added, rearranging decor, changing up the filtration and flow, and the lighting schedule and none of that seems to really get them to come out. I'm just hoping they grow out of that with time, especially because they get such awesome coloration as adults. I definitely want to be able to see them in the tank, so I'll definitely keep an eye out for that and provide updates on this tank over time. So I hope you enjoyed seeing all my aquariums and all my different fish and just the general updates that are happening. So much is going on for Cichlid Bros, and this is only my basement aquariums. I can't wait for you guys to see what Alec and Quinn are up to as well and also just to share the updates on the new custom aquarium that'll be going right over there thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you next time